All right, so today we're going to show you how to properly mount the scope. Yep, I'll show you what it is in a little bit. But probably one of the first steps you want to do is to do a dry run to see if it's in the spot you want it. One of the steps is to kind of figure out where you want it in relationship with your gun and where your where your cheek meets up on the stock. You got to kind of get it in the right spot where it's comfortable for you. What kind of steps are we going to take here? Well, now that we kind of have everything dry fitted, now we got to mount the Picatinny rail to the gun. Then after that, we got to mount the scope rings to the Picatinny rail. And then after that, we got to put the scope in the rings and then tighten down the rings. And why don't we want to do that all together? Uh, basically, to make sure nothing moves you don't want you don't want stuff getting out of whack you want everything as true as possible so that when you do get everything sighted in it's going to stay there okay so what we have here is your standard ruger 1022 rifle that's a pretty pretty basic model with the wood stock and you know el cheapo nothing crazy fancy the scope is a vortex sonora it's a uh, 412 by 44 and that's what's going on it the scope mount which is like the big picatinny rail is the egw model 46 100 1022 tactical scope mount and then the rifle scope rings is the hunter the vortex hunter medium mount rings for the Picatinny. Well, the, the rings I think will do Picatinny or the other one, or Weaver. Weaver, yeah. For one inch tubes. So you gotta get, they get the right ring for your scope. diameter for the scope that you want. And usually it gives you the screw torques on, on the packages. So this one's 15 inch pounds. And then the, this one is 20 inch pounds for that. That'll be important later in the video. Yep. And we're going to use, to torque them later, we're going to use something like this. You can have any any brand you want, but, you know, this is just the, the Wheeler Fat Wrench. If you, if you work on uh, mechanical things, it's basically a torque wrench, but for small screws. And it comes with these, these bits, and it just... It just clicks out by the torque that you have set here. So pretty straightforward. Okay, so we're gonna mount it in the vise here. And yes, it is unloaded. Yeah, check for that. There's no magazine in it. So don't no be, magazine. Don't be scared. Don't be all scared. Nothing in the so, chamber. So right now we got it mounted. So what are we gonna do next? Uh, basically, we got to take the, the scope and the rings off so we can get the get the Picatinny rail mounted to the gun. I'm going to take a picture, though, of where it's mounted. Yeah, I just kind of slapped this on here to see how it would be, and but I haven't shot it yet since it was on here. So this video is going to cover get, mounting this properly and then sighting it in, getting her dead nuts. Okay, so here we're just taking the screws out. Yeah, you can do this probably one at a time will be the easiest. The rail actually came with its own screws. So the original Ruger rail had, uh, it didn't have anything on it actually, but it came with screws in it, in the holes. So I use the ones that come with the rail. I'm putting a drop of Loctite on each screw so that I don't loosen up as the gun's shooting. If you don't put Loctite on, it will loosen up. Yeah, and some people say, I mean, even the, the gun shop in town here said, if you torque it to the right spec, it'll be fine. Other people were like, no, you gotta put Loctite on. So it's kind of up to you. Make sure you get to the, torque to the right spec, but I would recommend a little bit of Loctite. Because you really want it to be off when you got that 
mm -hmm. I don't know, small game or whatever you're shooting and it's in your sights and you shoot and it's off because it moved. Mm, not really. Not really a Basically, fun thing. you got to do all this over again if if it loosens up on you. So just do that for all of them? Yeah, just basically take them out one at a time. And then remember what ones you loctited and that's the easiest way to do it. Okay, so you got them all loctited and in just, just until they're touching. Yep. So now the next step is to torque them to the proper torque. Now, the EGW package says they want it torqued to 20 inch pounds. They even say on here we recommend using blue Loctite on the mounting screws that are included with this mount torqued to 20 inch pounds. But Ruger says otherwise. Yeah, this, this is blue Loctite medium strength, uh, number 242. I'm actually using some from the from the kit that I bought. That's Wheeler Thread Locker. Okay, now we gotta torque it. And Ruger says what? Yeah, 12 to 15 inch pounds. Okay. We'll shoot for 15. Yeah, 15 would be good, I think, since this shows 20, so. On the high one. Okay. And then you're also supposed to torque them a little bit at a time and kind of work them down. So don't go for 15 all at once. Like doing a engine head, huh? Pretty much. Same same principle. You tighten one down, that might loosen the next one. I didn't like my principle in school. Well, he ain't here, so you don't have to worry about it. She. That one's 15. You heard it click. That one's 15. And that one's 15. And now that one's 15. Now we should probably check them once more in case they loosen, one of them loosened up when the other one got torqued down. Okay, she's good to go. Now, we loosen the gun up and we put it upside down. Why? In case there's any Loctite that's dripping out of the screws so that it don't uh, get any action and... You gum it up? And yeah, gum it up. Crap. That's why Ruger says not to use Loctite, but if you don't use Loctite, it's going to... Loosen up probably yeah, over time. It, it will loosen up. You figure these things take a lot of vibrations when you're shooting. So I would use it. Yeah. Okay, so then uh, we'll leave it dry overnight. Yeah, leave it dry overnight and then we'll have to pick this up tomorrow or the next day or whatever. For you guys, it'll be right now. All right. So here we are the next day. Yep. What are we going to do now? First part should be dry, right? Yeah. What we'll do is we'll take it out of the thing here. We got to flip her over. And we might as well check the action, make sure that works yet. And it does. So now we can go back right side up. Okay, you're probably going to want these on this side, huh? I would. That way it's yeah. not in, yeah. interfering with your charging handle. Yep. If you have the left-hand version, you might want them on the other side, but this is the right-hand version. Yeah, and I'm right-handed, so that'll work for me. Okay, now do you remember what slots we were in? Got a picture. It's a good thing you do, because I don't remember. So originally it was 
almost any end, so it's in a little bit because we're putting it in a little bit from where it was. Because you don't want to ride up on the end of the scope at all. So basically what these do is it helps you to align the rings with each other so they're not so they're parallel. So you don't end up with one like this because that ain't good. Yeah. So you're looking for basically the two points to line up. So now I kind of have them in here. I got these snugged up so that these can't move. So now we got to Loctite these and then push them forward and down and try to get this to line up and then tight torque this down at the same time. So now I'll throw, throw a little Loctite on these. Be careful not to cross thread it. Yeah, if you turn it backwards or counterclockwise, when you first started, it should get that click where it comes off the thread and then go back clockwise. So you gotta get your last one on there. Yep. 25 to 30 inch bones to torque for the, the rings. That'd kind of be 27 and a half. Yeah, let's do another 30. You know. uh, that ain't that big of a bolt. We Let's not push it. I think it'll hold, it, hold right where it is. Okay. Now down and forward. And now this is only one, so... We don't have to do any kind of cross stuff. Just make sure you push it in. Try to keep it square. That one's torqued. So we're just a hair off in alignment, so we're gonna try and get a little bit closer. Okay, does that look good? So what we're trying to do is line the points up as good as we can. It looks good there. We'll see what it looks like when it's torqued. Looks pretty good. It don't have to be perfect either because when we lap it, it's going to take some of that out. Yeah. But it. you want it as close as you can so you ain't lapping for two days. Yeah, we'll go with that. Okay. Now, I should almost hit them both once more just to make sure we're good and, good and tight. That's what you say when you sneeze. Good and tight. Huh? Yes. All right, so what's the next step? Wait for the Loctite to dry. So probably tomorrow. We'll pick this up tomorrow. And for you guys, it'll be right now. All right, we're back on the next day or actually several days later. Back to the project. So this has had time to dry. Plenty of time. Yep. So now the next step is to take these out and then put the lapping stuff in, which is this, which is a one inch piece of round stock that's been all machined down. And then you have a handle here and you put lapping compound on and you final true the rings. Okay, so taking the top of the rings off. So I wanna put a mark on here and then a mark on here so I can put it together the way it came apart. Because once these are lapped, they're going to be all, all matching. So you kind of want to mark so that they can go back together the way it was taken apart and the way it was lapped. Alright, what do you got here? 
So this one, I put one mark on it, and then... So to match this. Yeah. And that one's got two. Yeah. This is 220 grit lapping compound. It's like a gritty paste, huh? Or gritty, yep. gritty grease. Yeah, basically. Just for... This is what you put now on in your scope rings and on your clamps to actually fine machine them to true everything up and get everything kind of like bore, bore aligning. And just throw her on there. Yep. And put this in on there. Yeah, and I'll throwing some in the cap. Or the, I should say the top part of the scope ring. All right, so the ring caps are on. Got compound in them. So now what are you doing with the feeler gauge? I'm just trying to keep the gap real close to the same on both sides. Because when you have your scope mounted down, you're going to be trying to do the same thing. So you kind of want to lap them in the same way it's going to be in actually in the uh, with the scope in. Yeah. I mean, you don't want it like one way down and then, and then bottom out and the other one not. That's yeah. Um, then you ain't you ain't gonna have a true torque then on your on your scope. It's gonna be bottomed out. And you're gonna bottom out the bolt and you'll just be smashing the clamp together. You ain't gonna actually be holding the scope. So much pressure are you putting on it then? Uh, just a little bit. You still have to be able to to actually yeah. turn this. So now I have it pretty close, so now I'm going to start lapping it. You just move this back and forth. And now you're fine machining the rings. And then you'll feel it loosen up. And then when it starts loosening up, you give your, your screws a little more. say like you want 70% uh, of the inner part of the ring shiny so that you know it's trued up so Fresh is machine. there a way for you to know without taking it apart and cleaning it no there is not because you got great compound and the the ring material you're removing is also going to, at the end, is going to be gray. So you almost have to take it apart, clean it a little bit with a rag, and then see what you have. Pretty much start over if you need more. Yeah. Yeah, I had to start over a couple times when I did mine. All right. So cleaned it off. You can see the shiny areas, the part that's lapped or taken off. You gonna do more then? Uh, they say 70%. So I would say that's 70% already on this. So what I should do is take the other one off and then take the, uh, Take the piece of round stock out and then actually check the bottoms. And if everything looks like they're 70%, we'd be all set to put the scope in. So when you pull them off, they kind of look like this. It's just full of lapping compound. You actually got to take the take a rag and wipe that out. So you can actually see how much you have. Okay, so here's the bottom part of the rings. This front one you can see. We have good machining right here, but kind of over here, not so good. And in this back part, not so good. So that one needs some more. This one here, uh, a lot of it came out in the bottom and it's pretty even front to back. So this one would have been good, but since this one is not good enough and basically the front one, the cap and the bottom part of the uh ring 
is not quite good enough. We're going to hit it some more. All right, did her a second time, so we'll check it and hopefully it'll be good. So now here you can see we're over 70%. We got a little bit of a ring right there on the edge and right over in here. It ain't machined down quite as far. There's a little bit of black left, but That's I'd say pretty it's good. pretty good. I but you can kind of see too that by doing this, we trued it up to account for any imperfections in the mounting below it. And here's the back one. It's pretty much 100% really real close. So by doing this, you're getting more surface area to contact the scope so uh, you could have imperfections in the way this is, this is made or even the scope but you're gonna have more surface area holding it it's gonna hold it better and you don't know if these are machine perfect either you you could have if you were if you had high spots you could be just holding in a few spots right yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're kind that's, of eliminating. Yeah, that and you are showing up the alignment between the two by doing this as well. Really put these. So the next step will be, it's getting late tonight, so next step will be getting the scope, getting the gun level, the scope level, and then mounting it and loctiting the screws. What you got there? This is a, what is it? CT key precision all purpose gun level. So, what, what we're going to do is we're going to level the gun and then put the scope in, level the scope, and then that way, if the scope and the gun are level and both on the same plane, when you're going for these long shots and you got to start going uh, up on your reticle. You'll, you'll just be changing elevation and you won't be getting windage. It'll it'll just be going up rather than like diagonal. You don't want to go diagonal because your scope is twisted. So you're going right off of the I'm going to go right off. Yeah. So now, now that it's in, you can see that we are not level. Yeah, the bubble's right here. So now you start moving the gun vise until you're at level. Mm. Oh, here yet. That's pretty good there. And then now you want your gun nice and tight too, so it stays stays level. Okay, now we're still level. So now you kind of want to get it centered on your rings. So you kind of measure this gap between the, where it steps down and your ring. And you do that where it steps down in the ring here. And you try and get them equal. And this one turns out to be around a quarter of an inch. So Now what you got? Okay, now this is the other little level for leveling the scope. So now the gun is level, but now the scope is not level. So now you, you turn this a little bit. There, that looks pretty good. And there are other ways to do this too, as far as the actual leveling part. Oh, it's close to where it was this way, right? From before. Yeah. Yeah, we'll double check that too. Until you actually have your screws torqued down, it uh, you'll still be able to move it. I got the picture from before where it was. It was kind of like over the right over the crest of the, the hump here. It's really great. All right, so we got scope where we want it as far as distance this way and this way. That's the gun's level and the scope's level, because there's two levels on it. 
Lock tightening the screws. I'm going to be putting her down. Permanent. Uh, what's the torque on them? Uh, whatever it be... says on that ring. It would be this one. Yeah, ring bag. Or box. Alternately tighten the ring screws to 15 inch pounds. Um, maintaining even spacing between the ring halves, which is what the shims through the uh, feeler gauge. Feeler gauge. All right, where are we at on here? We are trying to get these top clamps to come down even, and then after that, we'll start actually torquing them down. All right, they're pretty close as far as being even, so. All that's left is to torque it down. We're gonna go, it's supposed to be up to 15 inch pounds based off of the instructions on the rings. I'm gonna start with 10. Yeah, we're gonna go two steps. First step's gonna be to 10 inch pounds and then the second step will take it up to 15. And I'm not going to 10 quite yet. I'm just kind of trying to keep them fairly even. Yeah. Three. Last one. Should be one more step going to 15. And then she'll be done. Okay, now we're at 15. Now we're going to just double check it. Okay, that should be it. Probably let her dry overnight. It's because there's Loctite in the screws. And then go ahead and side her in. Yep. And we'll show you that. Coming up next. All right, here we are. For you guys, it's immediately. And for us, it's it's uh, like a week later or two weeks because we had a couple weekends that went by. So what we're gonna do, the 1022 with the scope mount, we are gonna sight it in now. And see how close we can get it. We have targets out there at 50 yards. So this is the first shot. So you're gonna see where it ends up on the target. So we're all right in here. So we know what we gotta do. We gotta go right and up. Okay, so what are we gonna adjust it? Uh well we need it right about two inches. We'll try two inches at the beginning, so well, yeah, make sure it's unloaded when you do this. Just in case you accidentally hit something you're not supposed to. So now we wanna go toward the right, so that's counterclockwise. And there's four. And then we need an elevation up. That's also counterclockwise. You can probably go. I'm gonna go try eight. Yeah, I'm gonna say double that amount. Yeah, you went to the right. That's probably gonna get you a lot closer. Yeah, I'm gonna be closer and we'll fine tune it again.
All right, we're getting there. I'm gonna say this one's a stray. Probably more like here. I would say adjust that same amount again. Well, not quite this for height. Probably four and four. Four and four. Okay, running CCI Blazer on this one. That'll be what we're running to finish this out. All right, looks like you got some bullseyes, huh? Yeah. Look at that. These are all new ones. I don't know if the guy should adjust it or not. Were you aiming like dead nuts for this? Yeah, I was aiming dead nuts. And now you should almost start shooting it because you have different shooters and the way you put your head on the stock and the way you look through the scope can change how you actually zero it out so okay maybe i'll run 10 at the new target then that's what i would say because it's close but it's probably not right on all right new shooter new target we're gonna see how close The cool thing is you can see where you hit through here. I got one dead nuts, two on the bottom of the bullseye. You might be out. Yeah, I think I just put in like five or something. That should be enough to see where our pattern is. Uh, most of them are in the bullseye. Or I should say our group. That one's like right on. All right, new shooter, new target. All five are right there. Yeah, and I, I was moving around a little bit when I was, you know, looking through it, so I knew it's not going to be perfect. It ain't like going to go all in in one. Okay, do you think we should adjust anything? Maybe up. You could do up a little bit. Uh, what do you think? One MOA for a half inch? Yeah. And then left and right, I... That's pretty good. Yeah, left and right, I don't think I'd adjust. So how much are we going? We're going to go one MOA to 13. Try that. Yeah, I got five more. Who showed you that? Hickok 45 he usually does that. Gets them all to the back. Yeah, it probably helps. It, it makes a difference. That way if you don't, if one's a little bit off, it can screw it up. All right. She's close. Well, the cool thing with a scope is I can put the reticle right where you know where it's aimed at, pull the trigger, and all of a sudden I see a spotter where it's right where the reticle is. So pretty good. New ones. I shot five, two, three, four. Is and that prob a double? probably here. Yeah, that's a double now. This one I think is, this one would be a new one. So we're going to leave her right there. Yeah, it's a pretty tight group and it's right where you want her. Well, I think it's a success. The scope mount is complete. 
she sighted in. So it's provided that it stays stays on, should be good. And here's the caps for it.